So it is the Monday after UFC 300. The dust has settled a bit. And you guys already know, the first fight I'm going to be talking about, of course, Charles Oliveira versus Armin Sarukian. Now, just starting things off, but we're going to get into it later for sure. Daniel Cormier should never, ever commentate a Charles Oliveira fight ever again. I, I cannot stand it. We need to somehow let him know that there is a judging criteria that we're supposed to follow. He still doesn't know this for reasons we're going to look at. But if someone, anyone, if we can find a way, just just spam him with tweets, something, something. But we got to get that message across because it is abhorrent how ignorant he is as a commentator. But going back to the fight, of course, there's been a lot of discussion online, a lot of disagreements. You know, what surprised me, a lot of Charles haters emerged from the sewers with a lot of delight about this decision, which surprised me. I just didn't know they existed, but, you know, I, well, they're, 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 they're out there. And one thing these haters were saying, but also I'm sure other people were saying it too who aren't Charles haters, they were saying that you could have called that fight 30-27 for Armin. That's what they believe. That's not true. That that there, There's no way you can make a logical argument that Armin Sarukian won round one. Like, that, that, that is just not possible. If you navigate over to the MMA judging criteria, something that Daniel Cormier has never heard about, the number one criteria for judging who won a round, the thing you're supposed to look at, is effective striking slash grappling. And the important thing you need to understand about this criteria is... A fighter is scoring whenever they do something that is contributing to the end of the match with the immediate weighing heavier than the cumulative. So short, in round one, when Armin switched the position and ended up on top, he landed a couple short elbows. None of them landed super cleanly. But of course, those did contribute to the potential end of the match. But the immediate weighs way heavier than the cumulative. And the closest that fight came to ending was that guillotine attempt. That was very, very tight and very close to finishing the fight. Armin had to completely turn to his back to get out. So there is just no way you can say Armin won round one. Maybe if he had landed those elbows he did in round two in round one, maybe you can stretch it. But even then, those did not weigh as heavily to end the match as that guillotine attempt did. But of course, at the start of round three, Daniel Cormier says this. And if you're generous and you really value submissions, Oliveira got the big submission off in the first round with the top control. Armand controlled the second part of that round, so a very close round one. Yeah, very hard. Armand round round two. Yes. This fight could potentially go down to this round. It could. Or it it could be 2-0 Armand. Yes. Well, if you value submissions, maybe you can say he won. Uh, Daniel, it it is completely irrelevant what you value. It doesn't matter what anybody values. What matters is what the judging criteria says. But he doesn't know about it, but he's still allowed to be a commentator for some reason. But anyway, so clear as day, round one goes to Charles. So then we move on to round two. And now, first things first. That axe kick, Jesus Christ. Armin might as well be a black belt in Taekwondo because his kicks are very, very good. But I'm seeing a lot of people saying, man, Charles, he, I, I, he, just, he did not look the same on the feet to me. Like, he wasn't pressuring, he wasn't marching guys down, it, he, he just didn't seem the same. Well, you know, he did try to pressure Armin like he has in his prior matches. The problem is, though, when you're pressuring somebody, that is the perfect opportunity for them to shoot a takedown, and that is exactly what happened to Charles. Against Dustin Poirier and Justin Gaethje, they did not want to go to the ground with Charles at all. They wanted to avoid that at all costs. So, they didn't really have an answer when Oliveira was constantly in their face, putting an insane amount of pressure on them. They just had to deal with it and keep striking with him. But Armin had a good answer for Charles' pressure. Drop down for the takedown. Now, typically, because of Oliveira's guillotine, wrestlers like to avoid doing that, but Armin gets so low when he shoots. But still, even with that being said, the most significant strike that landed on the feet was at the start of round two, when Oliveira landed a clean straight right hand on Armin, and it caused him to stumble briefly. But, of course, the most significant part of round two was when Armin got the takedown off Charles pressuring, 
He caused a good scramble to get back to his feet, but Armin had a good position up against the fence in the clinch. He was able to complete the takedown, and like I said in the breakdown for this fight, the one thing that worried me about Charles was he has a tendency to stay in full guard despite being up against the fence, where that is the worst place to do jujitsu, with your head pushed against something. You need space to be able to move around and operate. I mean, even without being pressed up against the fence, Armin is really one of the few guys you really don't want to play full guard against just because he's so compact and explosive. He's like a buff hamster. And he landed really good elbows from on top. And Oliveira still did have some good moments off his back, and they came from him causing scrambles when he'd put feet on hips, push Armin away, making him have to come back in to re-engage. And then Charles were able to grab a triangle, land some hammer fists, but then when Sarukin would escape, Charles would just you know, re-grab full guard instead of trying to cause more scrambles. At the end of the round, Oliveira kicks him off, a very similar thing happens, Armin has to re-engage, and Charles locked him up in a tight armbar triangle, really, really tight, with about four seconds left. But it was just too late into the round. So, point is, Charles was capable of making changes and attacking from his back. The problem is... He was just too comfortable up against the fence where Sarukian was landing monster elbows and clearly winning the round. So now it's 1-1. And round three is where it gets really interesting. If you watch the Weasels breakdown, he counts every single strike and Armin edges him out in terms of who landed more or less on the feet. But nothing really significant landed for either of them. And of course, the judges are not tallying every single strike that lands. A lot of Armin's strikes were partially blocked. He landed one jab pretty cleanly that popped Oliveira's head back. Oliveira did land one kick to the body that landed pretty clean, but you know, like I said, nothing significant at all on the feet. Armin gets the takedown up against the fence, and he does not do any damage with that takedown. He, he does absolutely zero. I, I think you can't really see by the angle. He lands one light knee to the body, but other than that, he did not land a single strike he did get to side control. He tried to take Charles' back, but couldn't do it. At best, he slid one hook in, but could never get the other one. So, you know, by no means is Charles winning in these positions, but he's not losing either. You know, if that was the only thing that happened in the entire round, you know, you have to give it to Armin. But it wasn't. Oliveira shakes him off his back, gets to Turtle, grabs a front headlock, and he sinks in the Darce choke. Now, without a doubt, that was the most significant attack in round three, without a doubt. Now, anybody who's done a lot of jujitsu, or in my case, has done a lot of Aikido, they'll tell you, that position they were in, it's really difficult to finish the darts from there. What you want is your opponent on their side with you hooking their legs. That is the ideal way to finish the darts. But the position they were in, it, it could have been worse. If Armin's left arm was reaching around Charles' back, then I tell you that submission's not even in. It's not even in. It's just a formality that Charles has even locked it up at all. And that's because a big part of finishing that choke is the arm of your opponent that is in the darts is pushing into their own neck. So look, the submission, it wasn't as tight as it possibly could have been, but it still was a legitimate submission attempt. And in round three, the closest that fight came to ending was that choke. So according to the judging criteria, Charles Oliveira should have won round three. It, it, it is just that simple. Now, I understand a lot of people are very upset about all this. Me personally, you know, I'm kind of indifferent. The fight was super, super close. It was a split decision. It should have been five rounds. It was only three. To me, it's not like Charles' title aspirations are out the window now. He's still 100% in the conversation. They'll probably give him another fight at some point in this year. If he wins that, boom, he's probably next up for the title. Now, there's going to be a bit of a line now because, you know, Poirier is now fighting Islam. Sarukian will probably fight him after that. Now, if Gaethje had beat Max, then he would also be in line. So that would, that would kind of suck. But Max might be fighting Toporia now, so, you know, it, it, like I said, to me, you know, I'm not ready to jump ship. It's not like Oliveira got robbed and now everything's out the window. He's still in the conversation. I would love to see Sarukian fight Islam, so I'm all cool with it. 